Hey, it's Greg Sestero from The Room, and you are listening to Cinema Psycho Show. Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. Welcome to The Cinema Psycho Show. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. <laughs> oh, my God, don't stop now. With your hosts, Brian, John, and Elaine. <laughs> Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your host, Brian Cottington, and my fellow co-hosts and filmmakers, John Lane Woolscroft. More like M. Night Shyamalan's ass. Reunited, and it feels <laughs> so good, guys. You ever have a feeling of deja vu, like you've said that before? Maybe. Yeah, maybe, because we had to record again. Um, maybe. It was off the cuff the first time, and I'm like, do I just do it again? Listen, we are committed to quality product. We, there was some... Are background noise that was unacceptable and so we took two and i'm fine with it it there is you fine there you go so we're on episode 129 and uh this week we're going to be talking about uh the movie glass m night's yeah, back at it baby and i was fuck you <laughs> it's you know be, oh I would say, oh he's back to form i'd be like yeah shitty <laughs> as we expected yeah. i mean form can be good or bad and this is obviously very bad <laughs> um this episode is going to be full of spoilers so if you haven't seen the movie get out you can sit around and we'll save you like you know the the two hours um and yeah, don't cost go of see it admission if it. yeah if you have it'll be a group therapy session we'll you know and like we give you ample time to see this we purposely because we can't help but spoil things wait a couple of weeks so yeah. people have a chance to see him so yeah yeah so uh but before we get to that john you've got a little update for us on the oscars right have we said what episode we're on 129 yeah, he did. did we 129 you oh, said it yeah. yeah i said it sorry i, said I, I had a stroke i guess <laughs> <It's> okay <laughs> um yeah so uh the noms came out um it's been a little bit of time now but i thought uh we could give uh, our dear Listeners in the yeah, worth station. mentioning. Yeah, yeah. our thoughts. Um, so, in uh, after everybody uh, got butt hurt over the Dark Knight not getting nominated for mm-hmm. Best Picture, they went from five up up to a maximum of ten picture nominees, and they can basically randomly decide where they want ten, nine, eight, five, six, whatever uh, they want. This year, they picked eight, which was odd because this was a pretty strong year for movies, and a lot of movies were ignored. Mm. Such as uh, strange. if Bill Street could talk and First Man and, um, you know, the o- other movies that were just ignored, which is strange that they were snubbed because you could have picked two more. Well, I do. I mean, I think didn't. across the board, there were some interesting snubs. Um, you know, obviously, um, A Star is Born was nominated, but uh, Bradley Cooper wasn't for Best Director. Yeah. He was for actor, but he, not he for... He directed that? He did. Oh, wow. I and, and and it was all right, you know. Um, I uh, I liked it better than First Man. Which is strange, though, because he was nominated for acting. So was Lady Gaga, and so was the... Um, who, his name escapes me now, the actor that played his older brother. Oh, yeah, William something. Yeah, so how do you... Um, no, I don't think that's right. <laughs> um, no, I don't think that's right. Just uh, kidding. But how do you get three acting nominations in a movie where the guy doesn't... who directed those three people doesn't get nominated well and do it i mean it got nominated for best picture so (laughs) i mean bradley would still win if it wins best picture because he was a part producer yeah right um so yeah here were of the eight um in all all my infinite snobbishness here are the ones that i feel um deserve their nominations um uh the favorite which was my favorite it was your favorite yes yes (laughs) it's in the title about that uh roma uh star is born which wasn't in my top ten, but it was still it was a, it was fairly decent. Um, Green Book, and to a degree here, Black Klansman. Okay. Here are the ones that I don't understand how they got in here. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh yeah. Which was a paint by numbers, cliched rock biopic uh, that changed most of the history, and I feel that Remy Malek's performance is the only reason that anybody cared about this movie. Probably. Yeah, because I heard he was really good. Well, I think the Oscars are like, we just need to put in movies that people saw so they tune in. Like, uh, maybe. Yeah. Because nobody saw the I favorite. mean, it's it's not <laughs> it's not like they're going to tune in now for the host because yeah. there is no host. <laughs> it's a strange choice. It's It's been a weird year already for the Oscars, honestly. They, sh- they should only pick a host that doesn't have Twitter. Yeah. Because <laughs> otherwise, you know, you're screwed. They um, should just call you up, John. 
Oh my god, that would be all my dreams. Let me scour true. through my old tweets. See, I'm sure I said something. Call in up Fiji Water Girl. And I'm sure it happened. Yeah, we'll host together. Mean, mean Fiji Water Girl. Uh, uh, I like that idea less. Uh, Vice was uh, an interesting exercise. I'll say that it was. I, I watched it. I thought it was pretty good. I don't think it was best picture of the year no, nominee. No. Uh, especially since it's hard to make a movie about such a miserable prick. And that man really is a miserable yeah. prick. <laughs> um, and, okay, I know I'm going to get some hate messages for this one, but I don't know if Black Panther should have been nominated for Best Picture. I, I totally disagree. Uh. I thought for the form of a comic book movie, I thought it was the most successful. I thought it was really well executed. It was the only one that I've liked in literally years. Well, if you're just looking at comic book movies and specifically Marvel properties into the spider verse was in my opinion a better film and it was nominated for best animated you <laughs> not, know not that you have to re- replace one comic book movie with another but <laughs> yeah here's the thing uh, i i really liked black panther and i thought it was for a marvel film uh like above and beyond what you typically get from it now, I'm saying that, of course, because and ignoring the fact that I thought the visual effects for it sucked ass. <laughs> I, but, thought, I thought the ending just turned a little ludicrous well, when they're riding their like futuristic rhinos. It's not even just that. Like, I'm just I'm just talking about the actual like mechanics of crafting uh, visual effects for a film. Mm-hmm. In Black Panther, they were substandard. Um, like you could clearly tell then some of those scenes that the the you know the suits were completely digital. And almost to, like, the level of, like, Green Lantern. Okay? <laughs> um, like, the fight scene uh, at the end when they're beating the shit out of each other and you can clearly see they're in the suits, that was all completely digital wire work. So, um, and that, and this, the compositing of the shots, like, when they're uh, at the uh, waterfall. And you've got that shot that pans up and you see, like, everyone in the village is there. Um, that clearly looks like people in front of a green screen. Like, no one even thought of, hey, let's make this look realistic. They just, like, digitally cut them out and put them there. So there are things with Black Panther that I have problems with, namely just that sort of thing. Story-wise, as I said, if we're using the benchmark of a Marvel film, this goes above and beyond it. I thought they did a great job with the storytelling. The key thing you're saying is if we're using the benchmark of a Marvel film. (laughs) I can see people's point when they say that they don't understand why this was nominated. Um, I see that point at the same time, you know, even though we had movies like Blade, like that's when everyone seems to forget that. They're like, oh, well, we haven't had any African-American, you know, superheroes. I'm like, do do you remember Blade? What about Blank Man or or Meteor Man? (laughs) There haven't been (laughs) enough, though, guys. Blank Man. But yes, I get get that. This, I kind of uh, uh, view it as... Yeah, we had Blade. Yeah, we had, you know, other ones that kind of came in. Um, this one is basically kind of like if you had Superman, yeah. for lack of a better word, back of a better comparison. This is like if you had a Superman, a black Superman. That's exactly what Black Panther is to that segment of our society. And I get that. And I, I think it is in it's its cultural significance is important. Um, but. Like, you're trying to put it in the same realm as movies like The Dark Knight. Which, you know, they took the idea of a superhero movie and completely veered away from it to an entirely different thing. You know, yeah. that movie, I, mean, I don't think that was nominated for Best Picture, was it? No, that, like, yeah, like I had mentioned, that's why they went to 10 pictures, because everybody was all up in arms. Because I, I think the five nominees that year, like, three or four of them were extreme art house movies that nobody saw and not even entirely their fault because it probably didn't even come to their movie theater and then movies they saw like yeah. wally and the dark knight weren't nominated they're like kind of well fuck the oscars well i mean yeah. i can understand i i don't understand why wally and dark knight weren't nominated yeah i mean you know? i think wally was for best animated but just not best picture right know? and I, I i mean ultimately i'm arguing about a system that i've already said is completely fucked up and bullshit mm-hmm. um so i mean I'll, I'll, I mean, I'm, I think it's great that, that Black Panther is nominated, but I can see the argument why people will say, you know, I don't understand why it was. I don't know, guys. I thought it was dope. I'm super pumped it was nominated. I, I think it was, uh, I think it was a, a good, like, 
choice. You know, I think Roma's going to take it home, though. Honestly, personally, um, did you see Roma? No, I didn't. But at the same time, I think it would be a giant fuck you to every Hollywood <laughs> studio if Netflix won an Oscar. I know the rebel in you wants it. <laughs> Steven I know Spielberg it. Would just oh, I know it. Would be like. Mm, yes. <laughs> you, know, you know, like, really little dogs that get overly excited and just shit on the floor? That'll be Spielberg. <laughs> it's not a real movie. It's not a real movie. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, it, in the Oscars, I mean, it's just, it's politics and pageantry. like, And Marvel and Disney, they politic their ass off for this they movie all to do. be nominated. I think them more than do. more than others. You yeah, know, well, they were on the other end of glory holes. If well, you know what I mean. It's funny because this- I was talking about the Oscars with some friends of mine, and like they didn't. A couple of them didn't realize that it is such a political game, and that you actually like campaign to win, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and that you have like a campaign. They were like, "Wait, what are they like? They campaign for it?" I'm like, "Oh, dude, yeah. let me tell you, yeah, you campaign to win the best art." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, like you persuade people. You arted the best. <laughs> you per- like, you tell people to think that you were the best. Like the day we're it's recording so ridiculous. This, the day we're recording this, the Super Bowl is on tonight, and there's a winner or loser to that because whoever has the most points wins. Like, how do you determine you have the best art of all the art? <laughs> well, your your art is the prettiest. Have you guys, have you guys art. ever? You guys have been in critiques before, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like like have you ever been like like an art school critique? Have you ever sat in like one of those? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it's the same bullshit. Like, it's one asshole's opinion. Yeah. And if that asshole's opinion is already weighted down by something else, you know, either their own, you know, personal preference for something, uh, you know, they're going to skew that opinion to whatever suits them best. So, and no one no one ever is going to this objectively. They're going to this going like, oh, yeah, you know, I saw that movie. That was okay. Um, I didn't see the art house film because I'm not, I don't get out enough. Um, and they didn't, you know, campaign nearly enough. So, yeah. like... It, it literally is like if you had an art school critique only done on a grander scale with pageantry and all that shit. Um, it, it's a waste of fucking time. I've said it for, for, for years, and I've, I'm so removed from it. I don't even care. Like, I know you guys get all, get all excited for it because, you know, you view it kind of as like our industry Super Bowl. Um, well, it, it, it's a – yeah, it's a, it's a game show for us. Yeah. I, yeah, uh, and we have our little competition. No, yeah. and, that, and that's great. I just – personally just just think it's a waste i think it's a waste of time and i think i think the vast the reason why they're doing this john as you kind of alluded to is is they're trying to put more popular films in because people are calling out that it's kind of a waste of time it's it's a little antiquated i will say you know it's it's something that's just kind of over time become a little outdated yeah well you look at some of the movies that were snubbed like like if beale street could talk nobody saw that movie Except me and, you know, other, like, hipster douches. You know? Hipster douches. <laughs> uh, and just to be clear, if this is the first episode you've ever turned in, uh, turn on. I'm, I am a giant man baby. I have a room in my house that's riddled with toys it's and cool. movies. Like, I love Marvel movies. I'm not oh, saying yeah. I don't. Like, in, in Black Panther was probably – I was, was in my top 15 films of the year. So, I'm not – shitting on marvel in general i just don't no. know if we're talking about the best artistic achievement it's it's if, not if a big <laughs> punch him in the face laser beam in the sky movie should be nominated for that i don't know um but uh we'll, we'll wrap up this conversation but just with one other note because we're sure. yinzers i just want to say they did they snubbed won't you be my neighbor those which was fuck films. robbery not only was the best documentary of the year was one of the best films of the year and they can blow me that yeah. was upsetting. <laughs> yeah. That was really upsetting. Well, and the thing is, like, if you're going Dicks. to go out of your way to put Bohemian Rhapsody and Black Panther into Best Picture to try to get attention, like, people leave the room to go take a piss or refill their drink when it's Best Documentary because they didn't see any of them. <laughs> and there were two films that people actually kind of saw this year, which was Won't, Won't You Be My Neighbor and uh, Three Identical Strangers. That one a little less, but people still saw it. Yeah. If you nominate those two films, people might actually stay in the room to see if the Mr. Rogers movie wins instead of, like I said, going to take a dump yep. ski or getting more soup. But yep. then they'll poop their pants, and that's not okay. <laughs> they'll poop their pants. You know, the uh, Academy's just looking out for all of us, okay? <laughs> no, they're not. They're looking out for DVD and Blu ray sales. Yeah. So true. <laughs> that's what they're looking so out for. So true. I mean, I'll be honest with you, and this is my last note on this. Uh, the Academy Awards is really just, uh, you know, a way to add more marketing value to a film. 
Happy that's, cash grab. That's, that's the real reason. I didn't literally, get to 10. Yeah. that's literally the purpose of this. Because the minute that movie gets nominated, the minute that movie gets an award, it it's goes back on the right on back on the theaters. It's on digital download. It's it's all over the places. Oh, this is this won an Academy Award. It was nominated. Uh, well, and, and movies know. that wouldn't get play otherwise, like three billboards out of Ebbing, Missouri. I only saw that after it got nominated last year. It came nowhere near Pittsburgh. In not oh, yeah. even the manor, which is in Squirrel Hill here, that's probably the the artsiest of our theaters. <laughs> that's fair. Um, yeah, they kind of yeah they didn't even get it. But as soon yeah as, as soon as it was nominated, nope. the waterfront had it, yeah. which is probably the most commercial of our movie yeah. here. So yeah. and, and I yeah. get that, and that's fine. I just I'm just saying like that's the purpose of it. Yeah. But now that we're done with that fun shit, <laughs> let's get into some real shit. With a movie that will never be nominated for anything except for Razzie. I really believe was made because someone at the studio said, you know, you should do with that split movie. You should go ahead and like put it into your universe of unbreakable crap. Um, and this is glass. Your universe. This is what we have the to Shyamalan look forward to. Universe. The yeah. Shyamalan this extended is, universe. Th- th- this is what blows my mind about movies anymore. Is like there's a universe to all of them. Like fuck this. The Conjuring universe. The DC extended yeah. universe. I did not realize I was going to be so hateful today, guys. But I feel it coming. I did. I'm sorry. I did. I knew. Yeah. Lane, You're all going to be hateful. Lane, you are a miserable person. I am. I am. So, I, I got to preface this, and we're going to get more into this, uh, what, in two weeks when we do our Shyamalan retrospective? Yes. Yeah. So, what we, uh, yeah, because we're, we're doing every other week now, right? Um, kind of, maybe, sort of. Kind of, sort of, maybe, yeah. <laughs> sort of, maybe. <laughs> so, to be determined. When it comes out, it'll come out this month. But anyway, the point is, is that I really, in my pantheon of directors, I hate passion. <laughs> M. Night is kind of like a two. <laughs> uh, wow he's that high up he's not hitchcock because Hitch- I, I i don't hate hitchcock's work i hate his personality i got the you. fact that he yeah. completely destroyed uh tippy hedron's like career because she wouldn't fuck him oh so, yeah he's he's king he, of the tool he, wads. He, he's number one in terms of i fucking hate you the worst i mean in my in my pantheon of, I of directors i hate um it's hitchcock personally not again not for his work um Shyamalan and uh, Michael Bay. Fair enough. Okay, because Michael Bay just takes all my movies that I loved as a child yeah. and reboots the shit out of them <laughs> and just rapes them. Um, not to make light of rape, but just saying that's what he's doing to my childhood. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I don't like this director. I think he is overrated. Um, and now you don't like him as a person. How do you, I don't like how him, do you feel as him as? A, as a filmmaker, oh, I think he, I think he fluked it with uh, Sixth Sense. I think he's a fluke. The weirdest thing about this guy, in my opinion, is he has even in his worst movies like moments of brilliance, oh, and yeah. they're usually like for a minute or two. Yeah. And it's that's like, that's his something. epithet on his gravestone: yeah. moments of brilliance in a in a pile of. In a pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you, you're, Here lies you're in there. Shaman. Moments of brilliance and pile of shit. There's talent in there. Like, what? why is the rest of this just a nightmare? Well, it's kind of like music video directors. Like, they, yeah. they can do the short form and super short form, like a music video, really well. But have you ever seen them try to do, like, a feature? Yeah, I, I've, seen, I'm not one, talking I've like, seen one do an entire DC universe. <laughs> yeah, but that's, but that's what I mean. I'm not talking like... Like, I think David Fincher was at one time a music video director. Yes. So he's the exception to that rule. But most of them... He's a bit overrated, but yeah. He, he's, <laughs> he's a bit overrated. But I mean, come on. I love Seven. Seven's a great film. Um, but it's it's kind of like they can master the short form really well, but you push that to something that's, you know, 90 minutes, maybe even two hours, and that's where you start to see the cracks happen. You know? Um, and with M. Night, his problem... As I said, we're going to get more into this in in, in two weeks. Um, but his problem is that he hasn't quite mastered how human beings talk. George Lucas style, yeah. No, worse than George Lucas style. <laughs> because someone actually pointed out in the script and said, you can't fucking say this shit. Like, <laughs> well, in the in the first three films he did, not the, the prequels. Right, but I, he, he like, there, like, yeah. I think Harrison Ford Sand actually said, like, gets everywhere. You, can't, you can't say this stuff. You know, like, <laughs> you can write it down, but you can't say it. So, what are you talking about? 
so I, I think I think Shyamalan, uh, and and that's kind of how I call him. You know, I don't call him Shyamalan. Uh, he he doesn't understand how human beings talk. So like I was watching Split, you know, to kind of bone up on you know for a retrospective on him, and the movie's dialogue was pretty good up until the point that he showed up as a cameo. And him and the the psychiatrist are having this whole back and forth bullshit dialogue on you know the intellectual quality of Hooters wings. Yeah, like I'm just like human beings don't fucking talk this way. No, and that was something that really took me out of the movie it because did. people don't talk like that, that. That's Shyamalan trying to Tarantino it. You know yeah, he's I mean? not Tarantino. Yeah, you know, and it barely works when Tarantino does it. It does. Oh, and, I, I disagree. I well, think, in early stuff, the, but yeah. I mean, you become your own cliche after a while right. when you keep pushing it. And well, I think Shyamalan is very susceptible to that as well. He's the twist guy, well, you know. And speaking of uh, how that you know you become a cliche and it doesn't work anymore, when he was being billed as the next Hitchcock meets Spielberg, yeah, bullshit. Like his cameos made sense because Hitchcock always had a quick cameo in his yeah. movies, and like now that he's proven himself to be a hack fraud goof like <laughs> his cameos wow. don't work anymore because like you're not hitchcock well yeah. now whenever yeah. he shows up and I, I think you brought this up to me when you were seeing the trailer for devil yeah how you were in the theater right and and oh yeah and the trailer for devil came up in the minute that it said from, from the mind of from M. the M. mind Shaman. of M Night Shyamalan, everyone just started laughing. That's right? not good. Like a, a part of me feels really bad because I, don't. I think the happening <laughs> and Airbender had come out before. Devil. Yes, so like yeah, yeah, he was, and I mean, obviously, Lady in the Water, which you know is I think has seventy five percent hatred, and there's twenty five percent I think that actually like that one, but um, <laughs> you know, so yeah, I'm just sitting there and it's like from M Night Shyamalan, and there is just uproarious laughter in an, in an otherwise quiet movie theater, and I'm like. Oh no! This guy's done. Yeah, bought off. But he's not. Out. Yeah, because this movie came out. <laughs> yeah. So all five hours of Glass. Yeah. Do we want to? Do we want to give kind of like for people who don't haven't seen Glass uh, and don't really know anything about this? This is his superhero universe. Okay. Yeah. That so he's let's, quote unquote. Let's um. You know, we'll, we'll kind of give a brief breakdown of, of the plot and like what works and what doesn't work for us. But like, let's kind of give a little background. Um. So. This, if you believe him, he always <laughs> wanted to make. A I don't. Trilogy. I don't believe him um, for a yeah. fucking second. Is that he made Unbreakable, which you know is a slightly divisive film. I liked it. Quite I actually a bit. really liked Unbreakable, yeah. and a movie about da- is it David Dunn? David Dunn yeah. and uh, Glass. Elijah Glass. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't think it's actually is, is his name Glass. Named Glass? No, he he calls himself Mister Glass. Yeah. Oh yeah, but is is his name? I know his first name is Elijah. Elijah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, David Dunn survives a uh, train wreck. Uh, Mr. He's the Glass. only survivor. Yeah, only, only survivor. Train wreck. Yes, yeah. Mister Glass is convinced, who is obsessed with comic books, that he's a real life superhero. And throughout the movie, we discover that he actually is. Um, yeah. Big twist at the end. Um, twist. Spoiler alert for Unbreakable. If you haven't seen it, you, you um, had a lot of time. But you saw Glass, so you probably know. Um, it turns out that Sam Jackson's character, Mr. Glass, had been setting up uh, disasters, hoping that somebody yeah. like David Dunn would survive. And that's because David Dunn has a couple different powers. Yeah, like, he's, he's like super, super strong, strong. Can't really be hurt. He cannot be hurt be by sick. anything except for water. Yeah. which And he's just pathologically That's a common of thing in what his What is with him movies. and water? Yeah. Uh, I think he just hates water. I try to avoid drinking water. I, I no <laughs> it's liquids. Not good for you. No yeah. liquids. I'm allergic to water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he has like a, a reason because as a, as a kid he was almost drowned. Right. Yeah, but yeah. That, that it's kind of like you know, does the weakness manifest because of that particular thing or like I mean, everyone's born from water. Yeah. Like in the womb, you're surrounded by liquid. So right. Um, but anyway, uh, you the, find out his other powers that he when he touches you can like see your past sins and stuff. Yeah, if you if you are you if you are nasty, you have if to call nasty. him Miss Jackson. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, so yeah, if you've done something wrong, he will see it and then he'll start following you like a creeper. Um that's and, that's what his superhero yeah. name should have been instead of the like creeper. the guardian or the overseer as they called him in this one, just the creeper. Yeah. And that like this came out like 0102 something around yeah. there. And then 2017 we get split which uh is james mcavoy 
you know, uh, his, it's his off. acting reel. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. And I'll be honest with you. And, and I'll, I'll say this about glass. And I'll say this about split. James McAvoy is amazing. He really is. Like he was the thing that made split the most palatable. Oh, I would say he was because amazing he's... on Saturday Night Live the other week too. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't see that. No, he, um, he's a really good actor and like, it's funny. He's been in very, Visible projects, you know, like an M. Night Shyamalan, and and he's mostly known for his work with the the X Men movies. But man, like he's just a fine actor, and I'm I'm just excited to like see him in more stuff. Not to go off on a side tangent, and we will come right back. But I've heard that the test screenings for Dark Phoenix says that this might be another Catwoman. Oh no! Yeah, it's gonna be that Mm -hmm. bad. But anyways, well, Disney will swoop in and reboot. (laughs) Reboot. Um, Yeah. So split. Uh, it's about a man who kidnaps uh, a bunch of teenage girls. It turns out he has multiple personalities. Um, and what's lying underneath is the beast, which is gives him superhuman strength because, you know, the idea is that you have the abilities of these personalities. You know, yeah. So if you're blind and your your split personality is not, you can see according yeah. to like this movie's ideas. And, you know, at the end, he escapes and they cut to like Bruce Willis in a diner. And he's you realize that David Dunn is going to be coming after um, James McAvoy's character in Split, yeah. and and like, that's the kind I'm of like the universe. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the aha, like ha 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 ha. What's a twist? <laughs> what the twist? I twisted you on your head, and now we're in a universe, yeah, in which Unbreakable and Split exist. So that and means there's going to be a third one. I feel like it has to be said. You know, I, I I'm usually one to keep an eye on this sort of thing. I I wasn't crazy about what Split had to say about multiple personality disorder. They did not have yeah. a lot of the science right. They furthered, well, I think, M9. some. Dem- some damaging stigmas a little bit of like you know someone that has a, a different mentality is crazy because you know spoiler alert and split you know um he kills his therapist yeah and that's i mean that's really damaging like that's not well that's the tricky thing isn't it like if, if you want to try to ground these superhero movies in reality which is you know m night being like oh it's not you know a space meteor it's not a radioactive spider you know it's something that could technically be rooted in science which anybody who knows anything about psychology will tell you it's not but you can stretch that right right well i mean that's problematic though too Uh, you know uh, we're not uh, too shade like too many shades removed from you know disability as superpower which i have a problem with as well you know like glorifying a a yeah like a disability to um to to create some kind of hidden superpower you know that's not really authentic to the um differently abled experience you know it's not really something that is is helpful in its own right i think there's i think there's ways to do it right though you know, because I think if you are able to show the normal everyday struggles that someone goes through that and for a moment that they're, you know, they took them. Like, I, I don't have a problem with Daredevil. Um, the movie, I do. But, like, I'm talking <laughs> about the series. Like, if you've seen the Netflix series. Yeah, no, I haven't seen that. But, but that actually is a better representation because it goes through a lot of, you know, the, the struggles that someone who can't see. Uh, would have to deal with. Interesting. So it is more of a, a more accurate representation. I got gotcha. you. Um, yeah, I can't speak to that, but I, I, I just the, think... The Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck, yeah, that's terrible. But yeah, I just think it should be like an own voices kind of thing. And, yeah. I, and I think like, like I said, you know, Split Split didn't do a lot for the mental health community. Well, so, you know, Lane, it makes me think of like Silence of the Lambs and how if you listen very closely to what that movie's saying, like, um, and obviously outdated... Uh, words, but Hannibal Lecter says he's not a transsexual. He thinks he is, but he's not. Kind of saying that we're not saying that transgender people are crazy or dangerous. Like, but this person thinks he is, but he's not. Yeah. He's not one of them. He's just crazy to try to like give themselves the out that like it, this may seem like he he's. Yeah, transgender, but he's not. He's crazy. I guess. I mean, you know? but I think that's damaging as well. Like oh, I you know, know. Yeah, it is. blurring that line of like, yeah. oh well, you know, are all people that feel that way crazy? You know what I mean? Like, uh, right. we could go in a a very deep hole of of how inappropriate <laughs> and how um. Want to stay away from that hole? I think how, Catherine how, Martin how, was in a hole. Yeah, she was. <laughs> I was just gonna say that. I was just gonna say we're in a hole and there needs to be lotion. But yeah, I mean, like, there's there's a lot of stuff we could unpack there. You know, yeah. for another episode. So, so after split. We get the waiting game that then led to this movie, which ultimately is another one of these hype ones. Like, everyone was freaking their shit out when they thought that... Well, it's grading on a curve, isn't it? Yeah. Because 
we, you know, most people, you know, liked uh, The Sixth Sense. And then Unbreakable had its cult following. And for some reason, some people like Signs. They're like, oh, <laughs> that. Don't get me started on fucking Signs. <laughs> like, Split. You know, was actually not horrible. So no. he's back. Like we no. wanted him to be back so badly, and so we were all excited for Glass because like, oh, it's Unbreakable and Split. Those were two of his good ones. Surely this is not going to yeah. implode in our faces. But it yeah. does. And I just want to be clear to our audience: <laughs> we don't always purposely agree. <laughs> we just no. <laughs> and, to work well, sometimes out I mean, God, there's yeah. no one I disagree with on this earth sometimes more than you, John. Like considering, I mean, <laughs> I love this you year, too, honey. But I mean, I'm serious. <laughs> like we've been we've been married ten years this summer. We've been together for thirteen years this fall. And I mean, just there's sometimes you say things, and I'm like, I have the exact opposite of that opinion. Hmm. But I mean, for this one, it, it just isn't hard to. Yeah. To come to to a single conclusion, I mean this this movie was a stanker, guys. Oh man, it was bad. Well, I think the best way to describe it is subverting expectations. Yeah, I really because I now. I liked the first like fifteen minutes of the movie. I was like, oh man, this is actually going to be a good movie. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, it and was... then it went to the insane asylum, and it was so fucking. Boring. I like to think that that was Wes Anderson's insane asylum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Then... Everything was centered and oddly Everything colored. Centered. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, pastel pink. <laughs> and and to, to speak to John's point, you know, I think that we we had like a pretty cool setup, you know, because because David's actually like, you know, older, but he's still, you know, unbreakable. Um, yeah. Very, gr- very grizzled. He's running like a security company with a kid. Yeah. Like Grizzly Willis. The and, same like, guy. Grizzly and the Willis. Same, and the same actor. actor Grizzly yeah. Because, you know, like it was funny because I was like, that has to be the same actor because he's a very distinctive look. Like his yeah. face, like his features are very distinct. I was like, that has to be the same fucking kid. And, you know, it was. Um, and so, yeah, they they run like a home security uh, business together and like you know it was just kind of nice like the the um the son's like very protective of his dad even though his dad literally cannot be broken etc and yeah like john said i thought it had a lot of promise in the beginning and and it turned out that they found out you know that the beast was holding some cheerleaders uh hostage somebody has a fetish someone really likes cheerleaders yeah that was weird and it's weird because like as an adult now like i see movies and like when we would have, you know, the age that we were at when we were on Unbreakable, you know, um, when we saw Unbreakable, it would have been like, oh, you know, like those are uh, our peers or maybe even a little older. And like, I see that movie now and I'm like, these cheerleaders are children. <laughs> like they are children. Like they have baby faces. Like well, that's strange to me. And I think that is once again, M. Night subverting our expectations because it's one of those. This is going to be your typical superhero fair. Like here are. The, the cheerleaders in peril, and he comes in, and they have the big fight sequence like right yep. at the beginning of the movie. And it's like, no, guess what? It's going to be an insane asylum, and they're going to their their uh ins- their sanity is going to be questioned for two hours. Yeah, yeah well, fuck you. Yeah, so well, so what happens is, um, you know, they end up going. Uh, he ends up being able to find the the beast, you know, um, the James beast. McAvoy's character, and he ends up saving the cheerleaders. But um, when he's fighting the beast, they end up both being captured. Yeah. Yeah. By Sarah Polson's character, who is a psychologist at this like clinic or whatever. Dr. Ellie and, Staple. And they yeah. can Staple. Staple, yeah. They can stop the beast by flashing lights in his face, which causes another version of himself to come out. Yeah, because that's yeah. how science, science works. Yeah, that's not torture. Yeah. Well, because I mean you have to assume it gives him a seizure, right? Oh yeah. But th- then that's what like happens. Look, I, I saw that and I'm just like you're doing this to someone who has multiple personality disorder, and they have 24 distinct personalities. That's got to be painful. Oh, yeah. Like, that's, th- I mean, Disorienting, yes, he, confusing. I, and it's, it's like, I get that he's supposed to be the villain in this, and he's not really the villain in this. He's just someone who, you know, one of his personalities is, is villainous. Mm-hmm. He's yeah. just sad and mopey like everyone else. Yes. And I'm just going like, that's kind of torturing. Like, that's not really good. And, right, and I know there's the twist later on, but at this point in the movie, if we're supposed to believe that they don't believe he has superpowers, why do you need to flash exactly. lights at him if, unless you believe that he has superhuman strength? Yeah. Why do you need to have your cell rigged with water hoses? Yeah, that's how okay. they subdue. So you believe yeah. you believe you, you're David trying Dunn. to you're trying to you know prove that the superhero stuff is bullshit. Yeah. So you rig up things to support their delusion. Yeah. So when, yeah, when they get to the insane asylum, like it, Elena, as you mentioned, like Sarah Paulson is trying to convince them that they don't have superpowers, right, and that they're know. just simply mentally ill. But Again, it, uh, problematic. As Brian pointed out, like you know, they find out that David Dunn 
believes his weakness is water. So they have hoses in his cell. Yeah. If you don't believe he's a superhero, why, why would you why support would you do that? the delusion? Yeah, he can't break down the door if he doesn't that's, have. That's superhero. like saying that's like saying okay, we, like uh, you know the 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 fear of you know people having bugs crawling over their skin, you know. Yeah. Um, that's like saying okay. We think that this is a delusion, but we're going to leave a bunch of cases full of spiders and cockroaches here yeah. in front of the door just so you don't run away. With the glass, like, just, just slightly cracked. Just slightly yeah. cracked. <laughs> well, just too, slightly cracked. I mean, if you take it a step further and you really think about it, you know, if if he believes that his weakness is water or, you know, the, you know he believes he has super strength or whatever, yeah. you know, don't drink and, and you don't and you don't believe it, but you know that he does. Then you're just inflicting torture. That's, that's what I'm saying. Is this this is this yeah. is a house of torture, guys? Yeah, we're missing. It's decorated the like Wes Anderson did here. <laughs> is that in Unbreakable? Water was his weakness because of drowning. Not yeah. in this movie infers that this guy can't even shower. That's true. Yes. That's very because true. Because if he even gets hit by water, oh, fuck! Like, to be fair, he those not showered in years? He's to be fair, showered. though, those sprays in his bedroom were, like, at a million times more powerful than a shower would well, be, though. They uh, were I'm violent. not going to get to the ending yet, no, but, I mean, but the ending just in any amount of water. puddles are his yeah. worst enemy. <laughs> yeah. It better not rain. <laughs> and then, of course, because he has to be, because the movie's named after him for some reason, um, Mr. Glass is there, and he, he doesn't even have any powers. He well, he didn't have any powers in yeah. Unbreakable. He doesn't, yeah, even, he doesn't s- even claim to. No, Why guys, is he doesn't he even fucking speak for half the no, movie. He doesn't. Yeah. No, so we get to the insane asylum, and I swear to Jesus, it was like real time group therapy. Like it, it wasn't like a montage. It wasn't like a well, film HIPAA le- violation. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> well, I, I got to be honest with you guys. Like the pace of this movie was. Slower than a fucking snail. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> like, it started fast. Like, it started quick, uh, and then the middle just like dragged like that ass. That was his first twist. Like, ha ha ha! Insane Asylum. Ha <laughs> ha! It's fucking boring as shit. Did you need more popcorn? I wouldn't have minded the Insane Asylum if it was just like, just like twenty minutes, thirty minutes. But yeah. it's two hours in there, yeah, of just people like in their cells or in therapy sessions. Yeah. Oh. By the way, I got to be honest with you. This was a complete waste of Sarah Paulson. It was. A she. It could have been anybody. It could have been anybody. Waste. If I had never seen her in anything and didn't know that she was fantastic, I would assume she was the worst actress on the. Board. Oh my god! Because all she did was her deadpan face thing that she does sometimes in in like American and, and just story. speak yeah. like imperiously, but, you yes. know. Yeah. That, and that's something I think we should talk about in a retrospective. Mm-hmm. This man, Shyamalan, is not an actor's director. He does not get good performances no, out of doesn't. people who are normally good. Yeah. Well, an actor's director could be two ways. One, you get great performance out of people or people really like working with you because you're laid back. I think the, the latter is true. I think really? I like working with him because I think, oh, that was great. <laughs> Whatever <Interesting>. you want. <laughs> you know, you he's were like, in Die Hard. Can yeah. you go at, be in my movie again? You're so mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And Bruce, speaking of performances, Bruce Willis just... He, oh, he, did he give up. Well, I, I don't think I don't think he gave up. I don't think it gave him anything. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I'm, I'm be honest. With you. I don't think he. I don't think Bruce Willis is the type of actor who would give up. Uh, I, I think he. They literally just said, "Hey, we're doing a sequel to Unbreakable. You know, uh, do you want to be in it?" And he's just like, "Okay, sure, whatever." You know, what has he got going on? Let's be what real. He probably that? was like, "Do you like money?" And he was, "Do you like, like yeah. money? Here's some money." But the thing is, it's like they didn't give him anything no no him and samuel jackson had nothing to do in this movie that's that's a good point because when we get to the insane asylum it becomes a james mcavoy movie like, which i'm gonna be honest he with you, as, I, as i said he was fantastic in split and he was fantastic in this too i thought he was good um i don't know anyone else who could literally go between well those different personalities as quickly as he did. i i don't want to take anything away from him but just to be kind of a dick it's amazing <laughs> what you can do with editing if I saw James McAvoy do that on a stage, I'd say, wow, that's amazing. But he probably did one character. They cut to the flashing lights, you know, and then they get ready for the next scene. And then he does it again well, after 20 minutes. Right. Cup of tea. He's not just going boom, boom, no, boom, well, there boom. Were, no, there were some times where he yeah. was going between he one personality flipping. to yeah. another. And he was doing it 
like on the fly. And yeah, and, and and I don't care if it wasn't even on the fly. I mean, like he had a lot of very different characters yes. and he played them with a lot of nuance. And and that's the in, thing in too, a movie that was pretty much is, a sledgehammer everywhere can, else. You can tell that the, he literally went through with these different personalities and crafted entire backstories and crafted everything for him so that the performance that you got with him was, uh, you know, as nuanced as it can be. Um, I mean, you especially saw that in Split with, um, what was the, the nine-year-old boy character that he came up with? Uh, 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 not Kevin's the real name. Kevin's uh, real name, but... Uh, balls. Yeah, I'm blanking <laughs> on it. But the point is, is that he, you know, he there's uh, Patricia and uh, Dennis and... I'm, Getting the other other name, but uh, the point is, is that with the nine year old personality that he has, like you can tell that there are different layers to that character, especially mm -hmm. you know, uh, and especially in the scene in Split where he, you know, the the one girl character is trying to like find a way out and says, "Oh yeah, uh, I'll show you my room and I'll play my music and I'm really into Kanye now," and you know he's got that scene where he's dancing in front of a window and he's like, "Oh, where's the window?" and it's a picture that he drew. Yeah. So, like, you could tell that there's multiple layers with that character, and, you, and it carries over into Glass, but that's where it stops. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's that's the amount of layers that we're getting is just with that particular character. So it feels to me like this was a split sequel with Unbreakable tacked onto it. Yeah. You know? And well, not done well. It's almost on. as if they decided after the fact, and it's not a true yes. trilogy. No, no. Lane, I, I sense a hint of my, sarcasm. My, ah! my theory behind this is that uh, they were working on Split, and uh, someone at the studio basically said, oh, you know what? It'd be really cool is if you, like, put that Unbreakable stuff tacked onto it, you know? Like, just have, you know, maybe maybe a Bruce Willis. You could give him a call, you know, and just well, see if he's not doing anything. Here's the only thing that might throw a monkey wrench into your theory. Okay. I didn't explain my theory. I just said, like, you know... He had to come up with a movie. Right. <laughs> but I don't think they would add, because Disney owns Unbreakable, and I think it's 20th Century Fox produced Split. I think it was In Universal, fact, wasn't it? Was it Universal? I think it was Universal. Yeah, I, I apologize. I actually didn't check. But um, so they actually, M. Night Shyamalan had to do a bunch of um, favors and, and back channel stuff to get Disney and Universal to play together. Oh wow, that doesn't surprise okay. me. Because but that's they're, they're from two different French, the two different. Um, that's a phone houses. call. Yeah, that's a phone call. Right. I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> let's be honest yeah. here. I mean, if, if anything from the uh, uh, Sony emails that leaked, it's literally just a phone call. It's, it's like the Roger <laughs> Rabbit thing when they had to yeah. get like uh, Bugs Bunny and Mickey. We got Mouse Bugs Bunny on loan from, yeah. from Warner's. We got we got Mickey <laughs> and Bugs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I get that. But at the same time, like this doesn't feel like someone cared enough to craft something that was. In a universe. I, I, I do agree. That. I think Split ended and he's like, I don't have my twist. I don't have my twist. So maybe yeah. if I give Bruce Willis a call, he'll be in my movie. And I can <laughs> throw that twist in there because, you know, I'll tell people I made a trilogy and fuck them if they try to call me out on it. Because he, he that's nothing like Well, that. here's the thing. <laughs> he is. He yeah. uh, when people have brought up to him that his movies suck ass. He's so defensive. he is so angry about yeah. it and so defensive about it. So like he he doesn't pull any punches and he I I think he has like gotten in people's faces over that yeah like yeah. at conventions which I'm like why are you going to conventions M Night why don't you like study filmmaking <laughs> go back to school fuckface <laughs> whoa um, and here we are at fuckface your dad was right you should have been a doctor um, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> whoa John whoa. oh my so so we're at the insane yeah. asylum and uh, Mr. Glass is up to shenanigans yeah he's up to shenanigans <laughs> he pretends to be in a coma for like half the movie and I was just like you know that sounds really good just sitting in a room and like staring and not having to do anything hey, or hey feed Sam myself. do you want to be in my movie look motherfucker <laughs> If I can pretend to be in a coma, motherfucker, I'll be in it. That was the stipulation. If yeah. you could just pretend to be like out of it for half of the movie, didn't have to do it's anything. Like, well, well, the uh, the Avengers don't need me for this the yeah. next two movies. Oh my god, <laughs> the Avengers don't need me for the next two movies. So yeah, I got like, some got some time, got some downtime. Put me in a coma though, because I just want to collect my paycheck. But has he literally <laughs> ever said no to a movie? I mean, this is uh, well, actually. I did hear that. Did he say no? Uh, he was like so poor when he started working, like that when he got his first big movie, which I think 
maybe something before, but Jungle Fever, the Spike Lee movie. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. He said, I'm never turning anything down. So if a script comes by his desk, he's in it. So you're saying he'll be in my movie if I write one. And I'll just well, be like, buddy. You well, got, I mean, you if pay you him. have like, yeah, you, if you have big studio He's not going to turn it down. Oh, I with see. Mo- he needs money. Okay. Well, I mean, I'd have offered him like 10 bucks. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you guys. 10 bucks and you could be in a coma. Just kidding. That's why yeah, he is such an eclectic, you know. Uh, real because yeah, it, Coach yeah. Carter he done. doesn't say no Snakes to anything. Snakes on a plane, yeah. done. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. He doesn't say no Nick to Fury. anything, done. But, yeah. but anyway, so he's like In a coma. up to up to things, and like he's just and, and like this was another problem I had. I where the staff of this like insane asylum is shit is shady as shit. You mean the but, like, two people? We, yeah, the two and, people. Like, we, this horribly understaffed institution full of dangerous criminal or like criminally minded, like mentally ill. Because, we only need two people to run the whole place. Yeah, I mean, like, you need, like, four people to just manage the horde alone. Well, to be fair. But it's not real. To be fair, majority of the staff was used to decorate every one of those Wes Anderson, you know, rooms. Yeah, dude, it's true. They they spent all their budget. (laughs) The color choices were very unique all their fucking budget for that hospital on Wes Anderson paint and decor. I just watching those scenes true. and the, in the shots from the security room and these empty hallways over and over. I'm like, how is this the least like staffed insane well, asylum I, I on think the planet? There is a yeah. little bit of that inferred at the end when you find out you know, the real motivations behind Sarah Paulson's character. Right. right. I think that's I think there is a little bit of that. And we'll get there. But the problem we'll is there. that like if leading up to your twist, all we're doing is asking questions about, you, you, we're already out of it. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, don't worry. The big twist will reveal it, which not all of his movies have twists, so you don't. Uh, they really don't pretty much do. Except, most most of them do. Signs. Lady in the Water? Signs was. Water? Yeah, kind of. Well, uh, that everything was connected, right? Like, that was yeah. the whole thing. It's all, <laughs> all, fuck, all the signs. Everything. Well, your what? wife's car accident. It was a sign. <laughs> Aliens water. <laughs> Swing away. Well, calm down, hell. <laughs> well, it wasn't like Mel Gibson pulled off his head and he was a different type of alien. Which is, you know. <laughs> he was uh, a Nazi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he's uh, up to shenanigans and yeah, he's finding out a lot of stuff about uh, James McAvoy's character. Um, which Lane, if if you if you were able, since you have your phone there, if you could tell me what his character's name is, so which like, one, James McAvoy? It, would, you, would you call him Kevin? Yeah, I yeah, mean Kevin's Kevin his main Wend- personality. Kevin Wendell Crumb, and yeah, then and then name. we do have the character of Patricia, that's the older woman, and, right. and it was Hedwig. Hedwig, Hedwig yeah, was the nine year old person. Uh, Hedwig's yeah, little boy. So he finds out some stuff about Kevin. Like we don't see it, but he's like, <gasps> you know, um, and so he wants to stage a breakout and. All, all in the background of all this is that they have this like tallest building in Philadelphia, which ooh la la. I don't. Wow. Know, Philadelphia's not really known for its tall buildings, but I think whatever. They're known for like their cheese steaks and yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> it was a hockey. strange shitty hockey. Team. It was a strange choice at the end too. I thought, but yeah, keep going, John. Well, sorry. just alienated anybody that listened to our show. Really, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Grady's great. Um, Anyways, I mean, yeah. yeah. Listen, so, we're Pittsburghers. There was a, we knew there was going to be a bias going in. It's so fine. after, you know, two hours of uh, Sarah Paulson trying, she has three days to convince them that they're not superheroes or they'll be like lobotomized or something. I think that's or, that's or like days. That's or jailed. I thought te- I thought they were right going to be jailed. Maybe I have three days to convince you guys that you're normal people. First of all, first of all, let's be honest here. We have not gone to any law enforcement. There has been no court. There has been nothing no. to say. That at least show us that this deadline exists. Literally, you you were arrested, and three hours later, you were in a sane asylum. Yes, no due process. No one said you have three days. No, yeah. like I, if there was a judge, like here's the thing, uh, M Night. Let me let me show you how narrative storytelling works. Um, <laughs> you need to show us something, yeah, instead of just tell us something. So if you had, you know, a scene in, in front of there, where or may, maybe I don't know, they all show up at a court, and a judge says, okay, you know. Do you think you can cure these people, Sarah Paulson? And, and Sarah Paulson says, I think I do. It's like, okay, you've got three days. Boom! There's your narrative right there. There is your scene to, to cue us in that this stuff is real. You know, but that wasn't there. We're just taking Sarah Paulson at her word. Yeah. Anyway, so. <laughs> Sorry, that made me <laughs> really right. angry. I totally, yeah. I totally agree, though, because, like, what's really separating this situation from them just being, like, kidnapped? Like, they it's, were basically they, just they abducted. Were. That's exactly what happened. Um. 
But what ends up happening is because of uh, just a quick side note, Mr. Glass's shenanigans, they end up putting like tons of more Mr. surveillance Glass cameras uh, yeah. in there. Um, but yeah, he he's convinced David Dunn that he's going to take the beast to the tallest tower in Philadelphia. And, and you think you're going to get like a big like typical superhero movie ending on yeah. top of like yeah. the building with everybody down below. Like, big fight. And awing. Yeah. Yep. Um, and it just ends up uh, he uh, swerved us, bro. It's just a big fight in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, there's, of there's the crazy no. House. Oh, yeah, of the insane asylum. And the beast thing in theory is kind of clever, except when you see him running like an animal and I just laugh my ass off. <laughs> he did. He made a scene. I was embarrassed. Well, my no, favorite is the way the beast talks. No, no, he doesn't talk like that. That would be clever if he did. He talks oh, like, yeah, like a caveman, yeah. Firebeard! Yeah, like, <laughs> I shall cleanse the earth. He's I like, will give you that. The, the, the beast's voice doesn't match. <laughs> okay. And wait, did he? T- and I can't remember in Split. I don't think the beast talked. He did Split. Yeah, and why does he take his shirt off and and not his because pants? he's beasting out? It's like a Hulk. Why doesn't he take his pants off? What? <laughs> I mean, that'd be nice for the ladies, wouldn't it? I mean, he clearly worked out. If he's an animal, he wouldn't be wearing pants. He should just have his fucking ding dong <laughs> smacking Bruce in the face, you know? He's an oh animal. my god! They should have got Fastbender for this. <laughs> As always, how do we end up at oh Ding god. Dong? No, Damn he was it. like he's basically just be humping Sarah Paulson's leg. <laughs> Just let him finish. Just let, Just let him finish. <laughs> we got wildly off track. Wait, you're, you're, why aren't you laughing, Lane? This is hilarious shit. I don't know, guys. Lane is freezing to death. I don't know, guys. He has a headscarf on right now and a coat. Listen, I'm James cold. James McAvoy humping Sarah Paul. Miserable. It's the beast. <laughs> Bruce Willis just gets a spray bottle. And then he gets it on his hand and goes, Oh! Why? <laughs> God. So yeah, fight big fight in the parking lot. Yeah. Big fight breaks out. <laughs> um and you know, it turns out that Mr. Glass would never intended this to go to the big tower. No. Uh he what just a twist. he just wanted to get video of uh all the yeah. superhero stuff outside the building. To, to backtrack Because there's like a million cameras yeah. everywhere. Sarah, Sarah Paulson in and she in, yeah. well she installed a bunch of cameras yeah. for Reasons, I guess. Well, to it's because like yeah, in the middle stuff. of the night, he he's wheeling around, being all like turdy, sneaky <laughs> Crazy. shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they tried to lobotomize him, but he like switched out the laser. He took the laser lens. lens out. Yeah, he yes. took the lenses out. Okay. So, so we've we've come to the part where I have a pretty sizable rant. <gasps> oh God. <laughs> so if you oh, guys we, are okay, I know with what this, it is. We left her out so far. I know. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna like backtrack a little bit. Okay, so okay. here's here's the deal. So. We had the character from Split that was in the film, and we haven't mentioned her yet, Casey. but Casey is in the film. Mm-hmm. For no the, reason. the female character, she's in there for no reason. She is somehow there, both like afraid of the Kevin character, Kevin Crumb character, Kev- and then yep. also there for him. Yes. So she's his mother girlfriend. So his I'm watching. So I'm watching this movie, all right? Yeah. And like. Oh, the it isn't. Off. It isn't great, which is fine. But I was, th- I was like thinking, I was like, okay, well, I mean, like this was like a fine way to kill a couple hours. I had to see it, you know, for the show anyway. And then, in case he's been shoehorned in this whole time into the movie, it makes no sense that she's there. But there's like a, a quote unquote family member for each of the superheroes. It's the, um, you know, it's it's Glass's mom, and then um, <sighs> I- Dunn's <coughs> uh, son, Dunn's uh, son, you know, and so then we have Casey there for for Kevin. So can we? Can I just do a quick side drive? I'm gonna take the, the wind out of my sails, but Sorry. the mom, <laughs> the mom for Elijah, in yeah, wig in the worst old lady makeup. Well, didn't we find out the that... actress is younger than Samuel Jackson? Yeah, that was <laughs> we, yeah. John looked it up. He looked it up I after the fact. That. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> seriously. Look, so she would be ninety something years old, but so yeah. yeah, okay. So we have like a family member for each one yeah. of the people. This, and, and I know there was multiple personalities at hand, but like the body, the shell of that human is the same. Mm-hmm. And that is like the person, like the body that kidnapped Casey. And what, I mean, she was like trapped there for like what, three days, four days? Yeah. yeah I mean, a like a, a while. Yes. And so then this is where I 
I cannot like stand by this movie in any way, shape, or form because at one point, for whatever the reason that she's there, she's been shoehorned in this movie. It's been badly written to this point anyway. But Sarah Paulson's character says to Casey, it's up to you. You have to, you know, whatever. <clears throat> you you know, you have to like bring him out or, or like you, you're the only one that can calm him, you know, or like change his personalities because they can't use the lights outside because it's day. They can't control yeah, him it, with the like her, epilepsy her, like, lights. touch or something makes it stop. And like this Scarlett is Scarlett Johansson in Avengers. And this is and this is the fundamental problem with this kind of narrative. It is not the job of a woman to fix a broken man. And that is what this movie that's, is implying. That's a very good point. That it is her yeah. job to fix him. We we see this narrative all of the time. Yep. And it and reinforcing it in a movie like this is so damaging because, you know, you, you see it play out constantly where you know a a school shooter was rebuffed by his ex-girlfriend and you know and and you see this narrative to to young women where oh well just be nice to the loner kid if he asks you out just just go out on a date with him there is this narrative in our society where it is up to especially young women I mean you know because Casey's character she's young you know she's like right around the cusp of adulthood like 17 18 19 ish and you know this narrative that it is up to a woman to not only put aside her own pain and her own trauma, but then not only put that aside, but then push it out of the way so completely to complete somebody else and to to fill in all of the cracks and all of the brokenness of a a, a, a man that that needs actual professional help right. you know the, this idea that like oh just love is gonna do it <laughs> I mean we we see this like a, a lot and, and the problem is is that we have like a huge mass shooter problem in our country and it's usually the fact that they are a domestic abuser first mm-hmm. and so there's this yep. narrative in our country <clears throat> that women are the first line of defense against violent men and that is not only irresponsible storytelling if you look at it just as a purely artistic standpoint it's lazy storytelling because this is a damaging narrative this is not something that we need to be reinforcing in our nation to any generation you know like we we want to make sure especially we're not reinforcing this to young people but no generation needs to continue this narrative or see this play out on the screen because it's just going to keep reflecting back in our real life because we have a violent you know society And and that was that was when I parted ways completely with this movie when I was like, fuck you, fuck you, M. Night Shyamalan. This movie fucking blows and I fucking hate this movie. Like that's that's what really turned I, me against I mean, it. I mean, honestly, like I, I did not I, I'm glad you picked up on that stuff because all I saw was lazy fucking storytelling. And and, I'm, so and, no and I agree to be there. There was From, no reason. No, they it, wanted to make a connection to split. Yes. Yeah, and, and I mean, and too, I mean, I, I think that she's a fine actress. I, I have no problem with her, you know, personally, and and I was, you know, but fine with seeing her again. But there was no there reason. Is, there is a damaging narrative that yeah. they're putting in there, and that's the only thing that, like, yes. the only purpose she served. There was no fucking reason was for no her character reason for to be in the movie. Either. And it was just funny because when we got out of the movie, you know, John was like, you know, we we try not to talk too much when right. we see the movie together. But I was like, I am so full of rage right now. And John was like, <laughs> Oh my god, what? What's wrong? Yeah, because well, it took me. I, <laughs> I, more and more I thought about it, the less and less I liked this movie. I was kind of indifferent. At first I was meh, whatever. Yeah. Me. <laughs> right, know. and then as, uh, and as time, time when I was like, ah, oh, that sucked. <laughs> well, it takes you a minute to bake with a movie, I think. Yeah. Like, you'll see a movie and, like, you'll have one rating and then you'll, need, and then you'll wake a, up in the morning with your day. final one. I need a day. Yeah, yeah, you'll wake up with your final one. Um, yeah. But, but, yeah, yeah, but that's her, her, that's that was my, my bit. That was my rant. And her purpose is, is so odd because she comes in – and she's like, I want to go talk to him. The guy who's so mentally unstable, they have to flash lights in his face every five seconds. Yeah, and like, and they let her touch him and yeah. like hold his arm and, she, and stuff. At first she's like, like, no, you can't go in. And she's like, please, okay. And then they <laughs> let her go up to a dangerous sociopath and like get like on her knees in front of him. And touch him. Yeah, I, I yeah, mean, and like not, be completely what? in his space. I mean, when even the doctors yeah. wouldn't do that. I mean, just like every part of her character was just like, about putting her trauma aside and like being subservient to yeah. this character that I mean, you know, I mean, the mental illness, like damaging storylines aside, like if you look at it in the universe of the movie, this dude's a fucking criminal. Yes. And yes, he, he would have killed her if she hadn't escaped. Yep. Well, yep. And it, the fact, Lynn, as you said, it was so shoehorned in at the end, like you're the only one that can stop him. You're the only one that can Black Widow as Hulk, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, um, right. 
And that was amazing. I, amazing I, analogy. I wonder if at the end of the script he realized, oh, no, there's no way to stop the beast. Um, let me just go back to the beginning of my script and put the, the – girl from split in here yeah. again i mean that's to, possibly so i have an excuse my third act to like put an end to him but the thing is they just shoot him and he dies well that you're you're jumping a little bit ahead so so yeah <laughs> basically uh this fight uh happens for about five minutes and after five minutes uh it felt like three hours it felt like three hours to me um that's not good when a movie minutes, feels too long uh you know kevin gets shot uh well i, I, I didn't me. well i didn't bring this up yet it is revealed at this fight that basically uh, <laughs> Mr. Glass created <laughs> Kevin <laughs> by... Are it, you sure just, it wasn't very clear? Oh, yeah, I know it wasn't. Because, like, the dad... The dad on the apparently. train with his name on his briefcase and the little boy, hi, I'm Kevin. Don't leave me, Dad. I'm Kevin Crumb. I'm yeah. Kevin Crumb. Don't because, leave me, Dad. Well, it, it is revealed and that. And he's reading the brochures as my son has split personality disorder. Like, <laughs> we, we, get, we could put this yeah. together. We could have yeah. put it together from yeah. the name on your, on your briefcase. No, we, could, we couldn't have just put the name in there. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm getting kind of confused now. So... <laughs> It's a night movie. We're going <laughs> off the rails, guys. So, We're a train wreck well, at this so, point. Uh, well, hold, hold on a second. Okay. I just got to complete my yeah, thought, yeah, and sorry, then I'll sorry, let sorry. you go in. Okay, so it is revealed that Mr. Glass, he, he crashed a train in, in Unbreakable, okay? That, everyone knew that. Yeah. But what is revealed is that Kevin's father uh, was on that train, and he was, I guess, one of the only people that was, like, getting in the way of his wife abusing Kevin, which is what created his multiple personalities. So, in essence, Mr. Glass created the Horde, Kevin, um, and the Beast, and all those, ca- all those uh, personalities. So, knowing that, Kevin basically kills Mr. Glass by just smacking him around. Yeah. Like, breaks all of his bones. Right, right. there. Okay? Uh, after that, uh, Casey comes and does her, like, you know, uh, Taming His Hulk thing. And then Kevin gets assassinated, just shot out well- of nowhere. Well, we didn't talk about David being like thrown into the pool. Oh, well, that, that's that's at the end. Oh, well, is no, it? no, 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 no. You're thinking the puddle, then you said the pool. Yeah, the pool. There, yeah, like the, giant the tank. Tank of water, because thank. That's before oh, you get yeah. shot. That's hey, right. throw him into that giant tank of water that's conveniently <laughs> out here. I forgot about that. Yeah, I'm exactly. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, he gets thrown in a giant tank of water, and, and they, you know, his, they fight, and his his powers are not working because you know, like, he's moisted. Well, he's in the water, and then McAvoy, like all like ripped up, like comes and like dives in and like starts struggling with him and I was like thinking man if this was moonlighting Bruce like this would be hot <laughs> <laughs> you're so gross <laughs> yeah so but but basically uh, everyone kind of dies because you know Kevin gets shot he gets shot from just an assassin or a sniper <laughs> yeah. it's never really a, which really why explained. did she have to sit stop like only you can stop him just shoot the bastard uh, yeah I was gonna say like apparently shooting guns is work. surprisingly yeah. effective um, but I, I think it might have been that because he's calmed down, the beast isn't there. Because they never really say if the beast is impervious to bullets and things like that. Right. Oh, yeah. And maybe that's she my had guess. To, like, bring is him that down. they have to bring him sh- down? Because he gets shot with a with a um, with a rifle in split, and then he just keeps on ticking. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah and I they, think but they say like, oh, like the gun was kind of old. Like you know, it wasn't as like powerful as it should have been. But that's also or... the bullshit that she was saying. Yeah, but I mean, like it still could have been true. I mean, that's I, the thing that we never really knew. I don't care how powerful this beast is. You shoot him in the head, he's dead. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Yeah. So double tap. So yeah, always. McAvoy's killed. Uh, glass is broken. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> this, the, the best part, the best fuck you in this, the best part. fuck you. It's, it's insane. David Dunn. Yeah. Okay. He basically gets drowned in a puddle and I'm not joking. It's literally yeah. a puddle. It's like a pothole yeah. that's filled with pot water. It's a pothole that's filled with water. And Brian, I always try to say is that like, this is so confusing because this movie has a twist upon a twist upon a twist yes. upon a twist. <laughs> To the point where it twists itself oh, into it ridiculous. It has an Oliver twist. It does. <laughs> it has a twist okay. out. So, so yeah, uh, you know, Sarah Paulson's character comes over it tells and him grabs her hand, evil plan. and her whole evil plan is revealed. It's revealed <laughs> that she's part of some super evil cabal that really believes in these superheroes, but they're designed to control them and like 
eliminate the threat. Hey, you're about to die, but let me tell let you. Let me show you my evil plan. plan. She's puddle. literally like twirling her mustache too. Yes. Like it's it's really bad. But she does it with a deadpan face. <sighs> yep. I liked Unbreakable. <laughs> it wasn't one of my favorite movies of all time, so I didn't have a deep it was connection. Right, but you anybody know? that loved that character, oh, my hand just to be yeah. dragged and just drowned in a puddle He's like a in bitch. a puddle like a bitch. <laughs> I mean, that movie just basically kicked everybody in the junk that well, liked that movie. That's the thing is, and that's why, again, I say that I think M. Night is a sadist. Yeah. Yeah, I he's like, oh, he's did you like my, did you like my oh, movie, yeah. guys? Did yeah. you, did you, you like, like it? You liked my one movie, right? We're here, right. fuck right. you. Fuck? And I think he did it. I think he did it because the people who love Unbreakable, they weren't there for his shit films. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like you, you love. Oh, Unbreakable. Oh, you only come from my movie, the superhero movies, huh? Well, fuck you. You, you like made Unbreakable, a single but you don't like me. Superhero movie, though. So yeah. I'm going to kill Unbreakable, and I'm going to be the only thing left. Yes. You have to cheer me. You have to cheer me on now. But but yeah, David's dead. Uh, you know, well, when she uh, tells Kevin's him, dead. Glass is dead. When she tells him her super secret like uh, plan that they're, they're killing superheroes all over the world, um, <laughs> it cuts to a shot where they're in a restaurant and then, like two people leave and they all get like super quiet and they like, lock the door. It's like, why don't you just have a boardroom? Why do you have to do this in a restaurant? You don't understand. And That's wait the for super everybody secret, to leave. That's the super secret restaurant. Like they go to fucking Chili's and wait yeah. for all the civilians to leave. What if somebody else well, comes in to you eat? You know what this is? You know what this Seriously. is? This is this is like in uh, Quantum of Solace. This is where they're at the op- no. You remember remember yeah. Quantum of Solace where they're all at the opera and like they're all meeting to have the meeting there and yeah. you know it's it's we're in we're in public light but hey we're gonna have our super secret meeting. It's the same type of bullshit. But it's like literally not that hard to rent a room. Like a conference room at the Romada. Seriously. <laughs> no, seriously. John and I did it for our fucking thesis. You just you just call the hotel and you say, hi, what's your rental fees for your conference room? Yeah. Maybe, again, I go, always go back to the insane asylum. They spent all their budget on Wes Anderson rooms. See, I mean, so they, that the paint, super paint secret organization could not afford the Ramada Inn. Okay. So, so that, yeah, so they have this at restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> They've killed all the characters that you cared about. It's it's just laughably ridiculous. And, by and what this we're point. left with after all of this, after everything, okay, what we're left with another twist is another twist, because in about five seconds after this happens, it's revealed that that was all Mister Glass's plan. Yeah, nothing is allowed to like. Nothing's sit. allowed to sit. Like, okay, first <laughs> off, we found out that Sam Jackson made, um. You know, Kevin. He made Kevin. The, and then, By killing his dad. And killing then his they kill Bruce. And then we find out that Sarah Paulson was evil all the time. And that there was there's superheroes all over the world. And that they're going off and killing them one by one. All of these happen within three minutes. Yes. Yeah. And, and what, it's so what, convoluted. What kills me about this. Okay. What kills me about this. Is that all this stuff isn't bad. It's that it, it's, it's, uh, it comes after... A snail's pace movie, you know, like literally they drag their ass for three quarters of the movie Mm -hmm. just to get to this point. Yeah, well, it's bookended by a lot of action. It started strong and then, I mean, not strong like as in good, but like, you know, fast paced. And then at the end there was, you know, the the fight scene, but just in the middle was just like dreary nothing. The best way to describe it is if you smash cut my dinner with Andre with the end of Avengers. Yeah, dude. Like two people having dinner for two hours and then space bugs attacking New York. (laughs) Though, I mean, it wasn't quite that exciting. Some dude drowning in a puddle isn't quite up there with space bugs. It's it's, uh, not nearly as exciting or good. It's just, we're just saying, like the pace of the movie jumps up a notch yeah. at that second at that section. Um, so yeah, it ultimately uh, Sarah Paulson's character is uh, revealed, and uh, the cameras that she installed end up becoming the tools of her own destruction, basically, right. because uh, Glass had counted on those cameras being there so that they could capture this video. And I guess all three of the uh, friends of the supers. Let's call the super best friends. The, the super, super best, best friends. <laughs> Take the footage and they upload it to the internet, and like you know, the news organizations all over the place are taking it. Which you know that as soon as somebody saw that, would go fake. Yes. <laughs> oh, listen. All Sarah Paulson's character has to do is give a call to President Trump and just say, "You need to call this fake news," and he would go and be, "That's fake news." 
Super's not real. Everyone knows the only person who has superpowers is me, and that's my penis. It was uploaded by Killery. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's like still one more twist, and like the family of the super friends, you know, yeah. the mom, the the son, and the trauma victim, um, they all go and they release this footage. Yeah. So that everybody knows that supers exist. That's what I said. To what end? Yeah. But I mean, like, that's what I don't understand. To what end is so, so, that? So that Glass, a man who has who murdered who hundreds evil. of a people. A murderer. A murderer, yeah. yes. And, and caused. Uh, Mass killer. And created somebody by forcing them to go through an immense violence and emotional trauma. Um, Two so people. his master plan. From and David. Yeah. yeah. So his master plan could, could come to fruition. Because it was an origin story. It's not, an origin story, mom, <laughs> not an anthology. But like, this is the thing. I mean, I, like I said, I just, I, I know we, we talked about it. It just bears repeating. Like, they release it, but why? All their people are dead. Well, Elaine, that's what I was saying. Like, everybody would just go fake. Everyone was well, no, I know, them. but I'm just saying, like, why what did were they the, do it? Yeah, what were their motivations so for that, doing so? So that they, people will know that there are superheroes in the yes. world and they're everywhere. Yeah. But why do the three people with dead family members care? That's a very good question. That's what I'm saying. Why do they meet in Grand Central Station for no reason? That's but that's <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying, guys. That's what I'm. That's no, what no, I that's, mean. Like, that's, why? That's a very good question. Why would these? Why would they give a shit? Especially Casey. Why would Casey care? Yeah. No. I mean that. <laughs> talking that, to the mic, love. Yeah, talking to the mic. I'm like, uh, well, I'm yelling, so I don't want to like but, yell. No, but. but but that's that's a very good point. These characters have never really met prior to this, um, and I mean, as I said, you know, Casey should really not like. Glass's mom, yeah, because that you know, nope. Glass created Kevin. Kevin killed her friends, and then she and fell in love her. with Kevin, and then Kevin died. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is that, all Glass's. Mm, fault. This is all Glass's fault. Yeah. Uh, her you falling know? in love with Kevin makes uh, me so mad. It's not so, true. So mm. yeah, I mean this, and and ultimately, you could say that that Glass basically ruined David Dunn's marriage. Yeah, he's a he's a horrible nightmare. He's of a, a human horrible being. nightmare of a human being. So so yeah, this movie basically paints him as the hero. Well, this goes to so many times with uh, with M. Nighter's uh, idea of fate. M. Nighter, uh, <laughs> love fate it. Fate versus uh, free will, which he be- I, he clearly believes we have no free will, and that we're destined to do things whether that is uh, like enjoyable or not. So basically what he's saying is that Sam Jackson was <laughs> born to live a life of misery and pain and to cause death and misery to others to validate himself. And at the very end, he says, I'm not. I wasn't a mistake, mama. I wasn't a mistake. And, no, yeah, you were. <laughs> well, no, not according to his logic. Like, I killed all these people because that was my destiny. Like, oh, okay. What? What are you trying to say? Oh, okay. And like, you know, the, it, that goes back to Unbreakable. It's like your destiny was to become a hero. My destiny was to be to make you and to be who I am. So M. Night Shyamalan's inferring that like if you are born without the ability to walk or, you know, or something like that, don't, don't feel bad for yourself because you don't deserve it because that's your destiny. Yeah. It's, that's also very damaging. Yeah. Yeah. So – Sorry that you were raped or your father was murdered or, you know, your your puppy got hit by a car in front of you. That's your destiny. Or your uncle touched you inappropriately. That's your oh, destiny. yeah. 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 Yep. That's that's for next next episode. <laughs> yep. um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to wrap this movie up in a nice, pretty fucking bow. Um, th- th- this movie really is just a giant fuck you. To anyone who might have stuck around for M Night, like yeah, if maybe, you're still if, if you're, you're still, still with them now, fan, nothing's gonna turn you this away. This movie probably ruined it for you, uh, and it, and it will ultimately. If you haven't seen the movie yet, and you're like, yeah, you know, I really like M Night. You know, he had some hair and misses here, and he did try to like remake Tales from the Crypt, and it completely blew up in his yeah. face. Um, you know, this movie will destroy any sort of love that you have for him. And that's why I say that I think he's a sadist. I think he gets off on, you know, basically taking those people who might enjoy his stuff and then getting angry that they didn't enjoy all of his stuff because he's a hack fraud. You know, John, as you love to say, the man is literally up there with uh, Daddy Derek. And well, I don't I wouldn't oh, go that yeah. far. 
Yeah. Wow. I mean, you are so done, aren't would, you, Brian? I'm so done. I, I, would, I put him with like Zack Snyder. No, I, I put him up there with Daddy Derek. Wow. That, that's, that's crazy. I can't, I I can't there go with, there with the you. The reason I put him up there with Daddy Derek is because Daddy Derek got angry at people making reviews of his movies, just the same way that, well, in that, that sense, M. Night yeah, but is M. Night angry. Does have skill. Uh, does he have skill? The, some of his framing is beautiful. Some of his tension building Was he the is cinematographer great. in this? Well, mm. I mean, you work hand in hand with your cinematographer. Mm. Well, I'm just saying. Like, you don't, things you don't things are getting tense you don't on the say, set. You don't just go to the cinematographer and say, do whatever you want with the camera. And do whatever you want with the lights. You work right. in unison right. with your cinematographer. But at the same time, like my whole issue with him uh, and why I say that he's as bad as Daddy Derek is, Daddy Derek is a hack fraud. Is, is the way that he is treating his audience and the people who might actually like his work is he just the same way that, that you know, Daddy Derek gets angry when people talk bad about his work. It's the same way that M. Night gets angry at people who talk bad about his work or question his quote-unquote genius, okay? The man's not a genius. He's a hack fraud asshole who gets <laughs> off. This got like... I'm Very just angry. I'm, I'm angry we about. We started off like no, I, halfway. Okay. I, I get angry because <laughs> I know that there are people out there who probably really liked Unbreakable and really liked Sixth Sense and and maybe even you really like some of his like eh, movies. I'm not going to say Last Airbender because uh, no fucking way. But but maybe you like some of his movies and you're really looking forward to Glass because it had the promise of something really good. You know, it really did. I think I think so. And this movie just says, fuck you. Like, that's literally what this movie should just be called. Fuck you. That's the, that by M. Night Shyamalan. Okay? Like, that's my problem with it, is that you can clearly tell that this man has zero respect for any fans that he might have and any fans that he just lost. Well, if this film does very well, it looks I don't think it is. If but if it does, look out for Sixth Sense too. Seventh Sense. Ooh, <laughs> the Seventh Sense. Ugh. Oh, jeez. Uh, so yeah, that was our yeah. review of Ass, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So Lane, where can they find you at on the Twitter machine? You can find me at Twitter um, or on Twitter at la underscore croft. John, uh, the Unreal J Wolves. You can find me on at Brian Kind on the Psycho Show page. Be sure to like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus at Psycho Show. You can also find us on the Epicast Network at epicastnetwork.com. If you have a favorite movie or question you want to throw away or you want to talk to us about how you are dealing with the fallout from the movie Glass, <laughs> you can contact us at cinematized. We're here for you. Com. And make sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and iTunes. Send us a rate, send us a review. We always love giving those. And catch a new episode available every Sunday. You know Maybe. what else? <laughs> you know what else Mr. Glass created on that train? Hundreds of widows. <laughs> <laughs>